Lo and behold, the mighty Camera Obscura. A marvelous piece of photographic history. Light, emerging from the scene, enters a darkened room through a minuscule pinhole in the wall, projecting the scene onto a canvas to be then drawn by an artist or enjoyed by viewers. Despite its conceptual simplicity, this scene is a nightmare, even for the most sophisticated rendering algorithms. Why is that the case and how can we do better? Hi, my name is Alexander Rath. In this presentation, I will introduce you to focal path guiding. We'll begin by revisiting the underlying theory of light transport simulation. We then define and categorize focal effects and discuss how they are handled by existing families of rendering algorithms. Based on these insights, we'll show you how to use clever learning techniques to render these effects reliably and conclude by looking at some of its results. Without further ado, let's get started. Our underlying goal is to take a virtual description of a scene consisting of geometry, materials, light sources and a camera and produce a photorealistic image from it, as if it were captured by a real camera. This problem is known as light transport simulation and it involves finding and evaluating all possible paths that connect our camera and our light sources. A particularly challenging phenomenon are focal effects. These occur when a continuum of paths, or extensions thereof, converge in a small region of space. This can result from a variety of different constellations. Direct focal points, for example, occur at small light sources or at the camera itself. Paths converge here as they either start or end at their location. Direct focal points are the simplest to handle because their location is known beforehand. Indirect focal points, on the other hand, are caused by objects interacting with light, either by scattering a narrow beam of light, for example a laser pointed at a wall, or by forcing light to pass a narrow gap, such as a small open window. These are much harder to render as their location is not always known beforehand. And lastly, virtual images happen when refraction or reflection shifts the apparent position of focal points either through lenses or through mirrors. The location is typically also not known beforehand. Which focal effects can be rendered efficiently depends on the rendering algorithm employed. So let's take a look at a few examples. Path tracing constructs paths by starting at the camera and continuing in a random direction at each intersection. Hence, it only systematically constructs paths that cross the camera focal point or virtual images thereof. A popular extension is to attempt direct connections to light sources at each intersection. And more sophisticated variants thereof even have some support for virtual images. In contrast, light tracing starts paths at the light sources. This explores light focal points as well as their virtual images, but unfortunately also tends to construct many unimportant paths that never reach the camera. Combining these two approaches, we have bidirectional path tracing, which initiates subpaths both at the camera and at the light sources, and then forms full paths by fusing their combinations. But not all paths can be found this way. For example, when a camera virtual image receives light from a light virtual image at a diffuse surface. If bias is acceptable, then photon mapping can construct these paths by merging nearby path vertices. So far, we've only considered constructing paths independent from another, but significant improvements can be achieved by reusing information from earlier paths. For example, Markov Chain Monte Carlo evolves paths by repeatedly making small perturbations to them. Given the right mutation strategies, this approach can explore all focal effects. Unfortunately, its uneven convergence hinders its widespread adoption and practice. A less correlated approach to reuse information from previous paths is to fit distributions to them. This is known as path gaining. For instance, Directional distributions can model where light comes from and focus exploration on these directions. 
Since many paths are needed to fit these distributions reliably, we must also consider neighboring paths. Unfortunately, this makes it challenging to discern the exact direction required to pass focal regions. By reprojecting the direction vectors, parallax compensation mitigates this issue, but unfortunately it requires information about the distance to the focal point, which is not always available. An exciting alternative is to build distributions over surfaces fitted to the positions of path vertices. By learning linear correlations between consecutive vertices, these methods can represent focal points, but unfortunately fail to do so in practice since training data for these effects tends to be too sparse. Our guiding solves these issues. We achieved this by taking the idea of surface distributions one step further, namely by building a global distribution over space itself. At its core, our density is represented by a spatial tree structure. Whenever a path is constructed during rendering, we split its contribution among all regions it has intersected. The key insight of our approach is that since many paths cross focal regions, these will end up having the most weight in our distribution. And to pinpoint the exact location and extent of focal regions, we have derived an iterative weighting scheme that prunes unimportant regions from our density. And additionally, our tree structure adapts its resolution to regions of high importance. Sampling our density is simple and cheap. We sample a random point according to our density using hierarchical sample warping. And then we shoot a ray in its direction. This allows us to systematically construct paths that cross focal regions. Computing the probability density of a direction is unfortunately a bit more involved. We need to integrate among all points that could produce the given direction. The required equations to do so efficiently can be found in our paper. But that's enough boring theory for today. Let us take a look at some results. Let us begin by revisiting the camera obscura scene. Pinholes are a particularly challenging focal effect that is not handled well by any existing method. Even bidirectional Markov chain methods fail to explore the projection of the scene on the canvas. Our guiding successfully identifies the location and extent of this focal point and robustly incorporates it into path construction. In our version of the dining room scene, we have another challenging focal effect. Parabolic lampshades produce virtual images of small light bulbs. Here, bidirectional methods benefit massively from starting rays at the light sources, but without photomapping fail to find a reflection in the jug, as alluded to earlier. Despite its lack of light tracing, our method successfully samples this focal effect and converges significantly faster than the existing state-of-the-art in path guiding. However, our approach performs poorly for non-focal light transport, such as in this living room scene. Hence, we believe the best use of our method will be to augment rather than replace existing algorithms. With that, let's conclude by summarizing what we have learned today. We have defined and categorized focal effects and looked at their common causes. We've seen why different families of rendering algorithms can handle different focal effects. And finally, we have introduced you to our focal path guiding and looked at some of its results. With this, I would like to thank my great co-authors, our anonymous reviewers, as well as the awesome artists behind our test scenes. Have a wonderful day. Bye.